Okay, so we are on the Explain 3A part on page 38. So we're going to continue modeling using function graphs. And it's very much like what we, what we did on the previous section, where we're going to use a graph to kind of estimate the value of a, or of a given x value. So, so let's go ahead and take a look uh, at problem number one. I'm going to let you go through example A on your own. But in question number one, we're told the cruise ship is currently five kilometers away from its port, which explains the five there. And it's traveling away from the port at 15 kilometers per hour. So uh, we're, we're tracking the distance from the port here. So the function f of x equals 15x plus five relates the number of kilometers y the ship will be from its port in x hours from now. Approximately how far will the cruise ship be from its port two and a half hours from now so uh, we want to know at around the two and a half hour mark where is uh, this uh, or how far is the ship going to be in two and a half hours from the port so let's go ahead and fill in the x values that we're given the first two zero one let's go ahead and pick uh, two three and four and that makes sense because if we look at the independent uh, values of our graph here it only goes to four so uh, zero one two three four seems like a good uh, series of values to pick. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So we want to plug in 15 times 0, since that's the first value. 15 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 5 is 5. And then let's plug in 1. Five. So 15 times 1 is 15. 15 plus 5 is 20. And let's plug in 2. I'm sorry, this keeps jumping around. 15 times 2 plus 5. 15 times 2 is 30. 30 plus 5 is 35. And then 15 times 3 uh, plus 5. 15 times 3 is 45. 45 plus 5 is 50. And then lastly, 15 times 4 plus 5. 15 times 4 is 60. 60 plus 5 is 65. Okay, so let's graph those. 0, comma 5 is right here. 2, comma 20 is right about here. Or sorry, 1, comma 20. Ooh, I made, almost made a big mistake. 2, comma 35 is right about here. 3, comma 50 is right about here. Ooh, wait, hold on. 35, yeah, 50. And then 4, comma 65 is going to be off the graph. So I'm not even going to draw the line for that. So let's draw the line from here all the way here. -ish. I'm going to kind of extend that line. Uh, so. Um, this line is going to keep going, obviously. But anyway, we want to estimate the value or of, of how far it's going to be in two and a half hours. So if I look at about two and a half hours, so somewhere in between the two and the three, we're going to be somewhere around right about here. All right, two and a half is going to be right about here. Right? So um, the value of x is approximately, ooh, so we're above 40. Uh, I'm going to say, but not quite 45, right? So I'm going to say about 42. Um, and if we punch in the calculator, if we punched in 2.5 into the f of x here, what do we get? We actually end up getting, oh, I was pretty close. We actually end up getting 42.5. So the answer is the boat is about 42.5 miles away um, when we're 2.5 hours out. So that was that question. Let's move on. Okay, so we're going to deal with statements here. So we're just verifying whether or not these statements are true. So here we're apparently throwing a penny off of the Empire State Building, uh, which is very, very dangerous, by the way, so don't do that. But um, we're told at the time the penny's in motion is measured in seconds and the penny's height is measured in meters. Okay, so the penny is uh, getting thrown off, and we're not even given a function here, it looks like. Uh, we don't like, like that. We don't even have an equation, but let's take a look. Let's take a look at each statement and verify whether it's true or not. So the first statement. At 7 seconds, the penny is approximately 140 meters above the ground. Well, let's take a look. At 7 seconds, how far is the penny off the ground? Well, if we zoom in here, right? Right about here. Yeah, that looks right to me. It looks like 140 seconds to me, right? So I'm going to say, yeah, it's true. Yeah. I like that one. Okay, next statement. At 7 seconds, the penny is approximate. Well, we just verified that it's 140, so that's definitely no. 
between six and seven seconds the penny hits the ground and x axis well that's not true the penny's still up in the air so we'll say no to that and then between eight and nine seconds the penny hits the ground and x axis so that probably is true let's take a look so yeah somewhere between the eight and the nine second mark the penny does hit the ground right there so i'm gonna say that this is yes okay nice and easy okay we're moving on Okay, Erica is getting ready to run the LA Marathon. She decides to study the elevation gain in feet at each mile to help her prepare for the race. So let's use a graph to determine whether each statement about the marathon is true. So let's go with this first one. Uh, runners start approximately 200 feet above sea level. So let me see. Approximately 200 feet. Well, not quite. that's not the most accurate statement. It's probably closer to 450-ish. 450 ish maybe so i'm gonna say no uh let's see runners start approximately 460 yeah 460 makes sense i said 450 but 460 is probably uh, more accurate there um next statement at 11 miles runners are approximately 200 feet above sea level so let's take a look at um uh, 11 miles. We're 11 miles in, about right there. So is that about 200? Yeah, looks right to me. Right, the 200 mile is, is this line right here. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna say yes for that one. At 11 miles, or approximately 100 feet. No, that's definitely. We just established the fact that it's 200 miles. So the answer is no. Question number three. For a science lab, students take a large block of ice and place it into a pot over a burner. They observe the temperature of water in degrees Celsius over time and label the graph with their observations. So um, so it looks like water is boiling, or sorry, solid, and then melting, then it's liquid, boiling, and then it's gas based on the temperature, okay? So let's go ahead and read through these statements. Uh, the beginning temperature reading is negative 30 degrees Celsius, and, and sure enough, yeah, it is, so I'm gonna say yes. The beginning temperature reading is zero. Now we already established the fact that it's negative 30, so that's a definite no. The water is boiling between 5 and 14 minutes. Okay, so 5 is right here, and 14 is right here. So in this case, it, it, this is the liquid part of it, so I'm going to say no. The water is boiling between 14 and 17 minutes. 14 and 7. So here's 14, here's 17, and yeah, that, that's the boiling part, right? That's the boiling. So I'm going to say yes. The boiling temperature of water is 100 degrees Celsius, and sure enough, that's uh, 100 degrees right there, that line. Yes, the block of ice started to melt at two minutes. Let me see. Sure enough, yep, two minutes, it starts melting. It's solid until that point. So I'm going to say yes to that last statement.